35 Worst Alcoholics in Hollywood History. Welcome to our channel. Today we uncover the shocking and tragic stories of 35 Hollywood stars who battled severe alcoholism. From legendary icons to beloved actors and actresses, discover how their addictions shaped their lives and careers. Stay tuned and hit that subscribe button for a riveting journey into the dark side of fame that you won't want to miss. Rita Hayworth Rita Hayworth, born Margarita Carmen Cansino on October 17, 1918 in Brooklyn, New York, was one of the brightest stars of Hollywood's golden age. Renowned for her sultry beauty and exceptional dancing skills, Rita became an iconic figure in cinema with memorable roles in films such as Gilda, 1946, and Cover Girl, 1944. These films not only showcased her acting talent, but also cemented her status as a global film legend. Despite her professional success, Rita Hayworth faced significant personal challenges. She struggled with alcoholism, which was reportedly due to the pressures of fame and tumultuous relationships. These personal issues, along with health problems, severely impacted both her career and personal life. Nevertheless, Rita continued to work and contribute to the film industry until the later years of her life. Rita Hayworth passed away on May 14, 1987, at the age of 68, from complications related to Alzheimer's disease. Her legacy endures through her timeless performances and her lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Rita Hayworth is remembered not only as a cinematic icon, but also as a cultural symbol who overcame numerous personal struggles to achieve extraordinary success in her career. If you find this video not interesting enough, hit the like button to save it and watch it later. Gail Russell Gail Russell, born on September 21, 1924, in Chicago, Illinois, emerged as a captivating presence in Hollywood during the 1940s. Celebrated for her ethereal beauty and delicate acting style, Gail quickly garnered attention with her breakout role in The Uninvited, 1943, where she starred alongside Ray Milland. Her hauntingly beautiful performance in the film left a lasting impression on both audiences and critics, establishing her as a rising star in the film industry. Despite her early success, Gail Russell's career and personal life were plagued by significant struggles. Known for her extreme shyness and anxiety, she turned to alcohol as a means of coping, which led to a battle with alcoholism that overshadowed much of her professional achievements. This struggle with addiction ultimately affected her work, resulting in a series of setbacks and periods of instability in both her personal and professional life. Tragically, Gail Russell's life was cut short when she died on August 26, 1961, at the age of 36, due to complications related to alcoholism. Her untimely death serves as a poignant reminder of the pressures faced by those in the spotlight. Despite the challenges she faced, Gail Russell's contributions to cinema during her brief career continue to be remembered, reflecting both her talent and the tragic circumstances that ended her life far too soon. Ava Gardner Ava Gardner, born on December 24, 1922, in Grabtown, North Carolina, was a mesmerizing figure in Hollywood's golden age. Known for her stunning beauty and magnetic screen presence, she achieved stardom with her role in The Killers, 1946, which established her as a leading actress. Throughout her illustrious career, Ava starred in numerous acclaimed films, including Mogambo, 1953, The Barefoot Contessa, 1954, and On the Beach, 1959, earning critical praise and several award nominations. Despite her professional achievements, Ava's personal life was often tumultuous. She struggled with alcoholism, a condition that deeply affected her personal relationships and health. Her high-profile marriages to Mickey Rooney, Artie Shaw, and Frank Sinatra were marred by conflict, often exacerbated by her drinking problems. These personal challenges, however, did not diminish her dedication to her craft, and she continued to deliver powerful performances throughout her career. 
Ava Gardner passed away on January 25, 1990, at the age of 67, due to pneumonia. Her legacy endures through her timeless performances and her status as one of Hollywood's most enduring icons. Ava's life and career continue to captivate and inspire, reflecting both the brilliance and the personal struggles of a legendary actress. Marie Prevost Marie Prevost, born on November 8, 1898, in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada, rose to fame during the silent film era with her beauty, charm, and comedic talent. She began her career in the 1910s and quickly became a popular actress with standout performances in films like The Marriage Circle, 1924, and The Racket, 1928. Her ability to captivate audiences with her vivacious screen presence made her a prominent figure in early Hollywood. However, the transition from silent films to talkies proved difficult for Marie. Her career waned as she struggled to find her footing in the new sound era of cinema. Alongside her professional challenges, Marie battled with alcoholism, which exacerbated her difficulties. Financial problems and declining health further compounded her struggles, leading to a tragic decline. Marie Prevost passed away on January 21, 1937, at the age of 38, due to complications related to alcoholism and malnutrition. Her tragic end highlighted the darker side of Hollywood's glamour and the pressures faced by its stars. Despite her brief career, Marie's contributions to early cinema remain significant and her story serves as a poignant reminder of the human cost of fame. Judy Garland Judy Garland, born Frances Ethel Gum on June 10, 1922, in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, became one of Hollywood's most beloved stars during its golden age. Her extraordinary talent as an actress, singer, and dancer was evident from a young age, culminating in her iconic role as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, 1939. This performance, along with her enchanting voice singing Over the Rainbow, solidified her status as a legendary performer. Throughout her career, Judy starred in numerous classic films such as Meet Me in St. Louis, 1944, A Star is Born, 1954, and Easter Parade, 1948, earning critical acclaim and numerous awards. Despite her immense professional success, Judy Garland's life was fraught with personal difficulties. She struggled with addiction to prescription drugs and alcohol, a battle that began during her teenage years under the pressures of the studio system. Her personal life was marked by turbulent marriages and financial instability, which further exacerbated her substance abuse issues. These struggles often overshadowed her achievements and took a severe toll on her health. Judy Garland's life tragically ended on June 22, 1969, at the age of 47, due to an accidental overdose of barbiturates. Despite her untimely death, Judy's legacy continues to shine brightly through her unforgettable performances and her enduring influence on the world of entertainment. She remains an icon, celebrated for her extraordinary contributions to film and music. Mary Astor Mary Astor, born on May 3, 1906, in Quincy, Illinois, was a prominent actress during Hollywood's Golden Age known for her versatility and depth in a wide range of roles. She first gained significant attention in the silent film Don Juan, 1926, but truly made her mark with her performance in The Maltese Falcon, 1941, where she starred alongside Humphrey Bogart. Her portrayal in this film cemented her status as a talented and compelling actress. Throughout her career, Mary demonstrated remarkable skill, earning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in The Great Lie, 1941. While her professional life flourished, Mary Astor faced numerous personal challenges, including a highly publicized custody battle and struggles with alcoholism. Her battle with addiction affected her personal relationships and professional stability, yet she managed to continue working in both film and television showcasing her resilience and dedication to her craft. 
Mary Astor passed away on September 25, 1987, at the age of 81 from respiratory failure. Her enduring legacy is reflected in her memorable performances and significant contributions to classic cinema. Despite the personal hardships she faced, Mary Astor's work remains a testament to her talent and perseverance, continuing to be celebrated by audiences and critics alike. Vivian Lee Vivian Lee, born on November 5, 1913, in Darjeeling, India, was an English actress renowned for her captivating beauty and exceptional talent. She achieved international stardom with her iconic portrayal of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, 1939, a role that earned her an Academy Award for Best Actress. Lee's intense and mesmerizing performances continued with her portrayal of Blanche Dubois in A Streetcar Named Desire, 1951, for which she won her second Academy Award. Her career was marked by powerful performances in both film and theater, establishing her as one of the greatest actresses of her time. Despite her professional achievements, Vivian Lee's life was marred by personal struggles. She battled bipolar disorder and tuberculosis, conditions that profoundly affected her personal life and career. Her tumultuous marriage to Laurence Olivier, though passionate, was also fraught with difficulties exacerbated by her health issues. Despite these challenges, Lee remained dedicated to her craft, delivering remarkable performances that left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Vivian Lee passed away on July 8, 1967, at the age of 53, from complications related to tuberculosis. Her legacy endures through her unforgettable roles and her impact on both cinema and theater. Vivian Lee remains a symbol of strength and talent, her performances continuing to inspire and captivate audiences worldwide. Elizabeth Taylor Elizabeth Taylor, born on February 27, 1932, in Hampstead, London, England, was one of Hollywood's most enduring icons, celebrated for her stunning beauty, acting talent, and tumultuous personal life. She began her career as a child star, gaining fame with her role in National Velvet, 1944. As she transitioned into adulthood, Taylor's career flourished with acclaimed performances in films such as A Place in the Sun, 1951, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, 1958, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 1966, the latter earning her a second Academy Award for Best Actress. Her portrayal of Cleopatra in the epic film Cleopatra, 1963, further solidified her status as a Hollywood legend. Elizabeth Taylor's personal life was as captivating as her career. Known for her multiple marriages, including high-profile unions with Richard Burton, she became a fixture in the tabloid press. Alongside her romantic entanglements, Taylor also struggled with health issues and battles with addiction, facing these challenges with resilience and tenacity. Her later years were marked by her philanthropic efforts, particularly her activism in AIDS awareness and research, which garnered widespread recognition and respect. Elizabeth Taylor passed away on March 23, 2011, at the age of 79, from congestive heart failure. Her legacy endures not only through her remarkable body of work in film, but also through her humanitarian efforts. Taylor remains an iconic figure, her life and career continuing to fascinate and inspire generations. Dorothy Dandridge Dorothy Dandridge, born on November 9, 1922 in Cleveland, Ohio, was a trailblazing actress and singer who broke barriers for African-American women in Hollywood. Her exceptional talent and stunning beauty shone through in her performances, making her a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. Dorothy's most acclaimed role came in the film Carmen Jones, 1954, where her portrayal of the titular character earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, making her the first African-American woman to be nominated in this category. She also captivated audiences with her performances in films such as Island in the Sun, 1957, and Porgy and Bess, 1959. 
Despite her groundbreaking achievements, Dandridge's life was marred by personal and professional struggles. She faced significant racial discrimination in Hollywood, which limited her opportunities and led to financial instability. Additionally, her personal life was tumultuous, marked by failed marriages and the pressures of raising a daughter with special needs. These challenges, combined with her battle with alcoholism and depression, took a toll on her health and career. Dorothy Dandridge passed away on September 8, 1965, at the age of 42, due to an accidental overdose of barbiturates. Her legacy as a pioneering artist endures, as she paved the way for future generations of African-American performers. Dorothy Dandridge is remembered not only for her remarkable talent, but also for her courage and resilience in the face of adversity. Richard Harris Richard Harris, born on October 1, 1930, in Limerick, Ireland, was an esteemed actor and singer, known for his powerful performances and distinctive voice. He gained critical acclaim early in his career with his portrayal of the title character in This Sporting Life, 1963, earning him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Harris continued to showcase his versatile talent in films such as Camelot, 1967, where he played King Arthur and A Man Called Horse, 1970. Later in his career, he captivated a new generation of audiences with his role as Albus Dumbledore in the first two Harry Potter films. Despite his professional success, Harris's life was often turbulent due to his struggles with alcoholism. His battle with addiction affected both his personal and professional relationships, leading to periods of erratic behavior and health issues. Nevertheless, Harris remained a dedicated performer, known for his intense and charismatic screen presence. Richard Harris passed away on October 25, 2002, at the age of 72, from Hodgkin's disease, a type of lymphatic cancer. His legacy is marked by a diverse body of work that spans multiple genres and showcases his exceptional talent. Richard Harris's contributions to film and theater continue to be celebrated, and he is remembered as one of the most compelling actors of his generation. Congratulations on completing one three of this exploration journey. If you enjoyed this video, please comment one. Otherwise, comment zero. We will use this feedback to evaluate and improve our content. Thank you. Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi, born on October 20th, 1882, in Lugos, Kingdom of Hungary, now Lugos, Romania, became an iconic figure in horror cinema. His legendary portrayal of Count Dracula in the 1931 film adaptation of Bram Stoker's novel catapulted him to fame, making him a staple of the genre. Lugosi's captivating stage presence and distinctive Hungarian accent brought a unique charm and menace to his roles, earning him a lasting place in cinematic history. He continued to appear in numerous horror films, often playing sinister characters, which both defined and limited his career. Despite his success on screen, Lugosi faced significant personal challenges, including a lifelong struggle with alcoholism. This battle negatively impacted his career, leading to financial difficulties and typecasting in horror roles. His addiction also took a toll on his health and personal life, overshadowing his considerable talent and contributions to the film industry. Bela Lugosi passed away on August 16, 1956, at the age of 73, from a heart attack at his home in Los Angeles. His legacy endures through his unforgettable portrayal of Dracula and his impact on the horror genre. Lugosi's work continues to be celebrated by horror enthusiasts and cinephiles alike, solidifying his status as a horror film legend. Albert Finney Albert Finney, born on May 9, 1936, in Salford, England, was a versatile and highly regarded actor whose career spanned over five decades. He first gained prominence with his breakout role in Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, 1960, which showcased his talent and earned him critical acclaim. Finney's diverse body of work included standout performances in films such as Tom Jones, 1963, 
Murder on the Orient Express, 1974, and Aaron Brockovich, 2000, garnering him multiple Academy Award nominations. He also achieved success on stage, earning Tony Award nominations for his theatrical performances. Throughout his illustrious career, Finney faced personal challenges, including periods of struggle with alcoholism. Despite these difficulties, he remained dedicated to his craft, delivering powerful and memorable performances. Finney's commitment to acting and his ability to inhabit a wide range of characters made him one of the most respected actors of his generation. Albert Finney passed away on February 7, 2019 at the age of 82 from a chest infection at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London, England. His legacy is marked by a rich and varied career that left an indelible mark on both film and theater. Albert Finney's contributions to the arts continue to be celebrated, reflecting his immense talent and enduring influence. Broderick Crawford Broderick Crawford, born on December 9, 1911 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was an acclaimed American actor known for his powerful performances and commanding presence. He achieved widespread recognition with his Academy Award-winning role as Willie Stark in All the King's Men, 1949, which showcased his ability to portray complex and intense characters. Crawford's versatility extended to both film and television, with notable roles in movies like Born Yesterday, 1950, and The Mob, 1951, as well as his memorable portrayal of Chief Dan Matthews in the television series Highway Patrol. Despite his professional success, Crawford's personal life was marked by his struggle with alcoholism. This battle with addiction affected his relationships and occasionally impacted his career, leading to periods of instability. Nevertheless, he remained a dedicated actor, continuing to deliver compelling performances throughout his life. Broderick Crawford passed away on April 26, 1986, at the age of 74, due to a stroke. His legacy endures through his significant contributions to both film and television, and he is remembered as a talented actor whose powerful screen presence left a lasting impression on audiences. John Wayne John Wayne, born Marion Robert Morrison on May 26, 1907, in Winterset, Iowa, was an iconic American actor, director, and producer who became a symbol of rugged masculinity and patriotism. Known for his distinctive voice and imposing stature, Wayne's career spanned over five decades, during which he appeared in more than 170 films. He rose to fame with his role in Stagecoach, 1939, and solidified his status as a Western film legend with classics such as The Searchers, 1956, and True Grit, 1969, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Actor. Off-screen, Wayne faced personal challenges, including struggles with alcoholism. Despite these difficulties, he maintained a prolific career and remained a beloved figure in Hollywood. His dedication to his craft and his larger-than-life persona endeared him to generations of moviegoers. John Wayne passed away on June 11, 1979, at the age of 72, after a long battle with stomach cancer. His legacy as one of the greatest actors in film history endures, with his films continuing to captivate audiences worldwide. John Wayne remains a cultural icon, symbolizing the spirit of the American West and the resilience of the human spirit. Gig Young Gig Young, born Byron Ellsworth Barr on November 4, 1913 in St. Cloud, Minnesota, was a talented American actor known for his charm and versatility. Early in his career, he adopted the stage name Gig Young, which became synonymous with his screen persona. He gained fame with roles in films such as Come Fill the Cup, 1951, Teacher's Pet, 1958, and They Shoot Horses, Don't They, 1969, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Young's ability to bring depth and nuance to his characters made him a respected figure in Hollywood. However, behind his professional success, Gig Young struggled with alcoholism. 
His addiction led to erratic behavior and strained his relationships with colleagues and loved ones. These personal battles often overshadowed his achievements and contributed to periods of instability in his career. Tragically, Gig Young's life ended in a murder-suicide on October 19, 1978, at the age of 64. He was found dead alongside his fifth wife, Kim Schmidt, in their New York City apartment. The incident shocked Hollywood and marked a tragic conclusion to the life of a gifted actor. Despite the dark ending, Young's legacy in film endures through his memorable performances and contributions to cinema. Larry Hagman Larry Hagman, born on September 21, 1931, in Fort Worth, Texas, was an iconic American actor best known for his portrayal of J.R. Ewing in the television series Dallas, which aired from 1978 to 1991. His performance as the charming yet conniving oil baron made him a household name and earned him widespread acclaim. Hagman also gained popularity for his role as Major Anthony Nelson in the beloved sitcom I Dream of Jeannie, 1965-1970. His ability to play both comedic and dramatic roles showcased his versatility and solidified his place in television history. Despite his professional success, Larry Hagman faced personal challenges, including a long battle with alcoholism. His addiction impacted his health and occasionally affected his work. However, Hagman sought treatment and maintained sobriety in his later years, becoming an advocate for sobriety and liver health after receiving a liver transplant. Larry Hagman passed away on November 23, 2012, at the age of 81, due to complications from acute myeloid leukemia. His legacy lives on through his iconic roles and significant contributions to the entertainment industry. Hagman's portrayal of J.R. Ewing remains one of television's most memorable characters, and his work continues to be celebrated by fans and critics alike. Glenn Ford Glenn Ford, born on May 1, 1916, in St. Christine d'Auvergne, Quebec, Canada, was a distinguished Canadian-American actor celebrated for his versatility and longevity in Hollywood. He gained fame in the 1940s with his breakout role in Gilda, 1946, opposite Rita Hayworth. Ford's career spanned a wide range of genres, from film noir and westerns to dramas and comedies. Notable films in his extensive filmography include 310 to Yuma, 1957, The Courtship of Eddie's Father, 1963, and The Big Heat, 1953, showcasing his ability to adapt to various roles with ease. Despite his professional success, Glenn Ford struggled with alcoholism, which affected his personal life and relationships. His battle with addiction was a recurring issue, but it did not diminish his dedication to his craft. Ford remained a prolific actor throughout his career, earning the respect and admiration of his peers and audiences alike. Glenn Ford passed away on August 30, 2006, at the age of 90, from complications of a series of strokes. His legacy endures through his significant contributions to the golden age of Hollywood and his memorable performances that continue to captivate viewers. Ford's talent and versatility have left a lasting impact on the film industry. Sterling Hayden Sterling Hayden, born on March 26, 1916, in Montclair, New Jersey, was an American actor and author known for his rugged good looks and intense screen presence. He first gained fame with his role in The Asphalt Jungle, 1950, a classic film noir that established him as a leading man in Hollywood. Hayden further solidified his reputation with standout performances in films like Johnny Guitar, 1954, and The Killing, 1956. His ability to portray complex and morally ambiguous characters made him a compelling figure in the film industry. Hayden's personal life, however, was marked by struggles with alcoholism, which at times affected his career and relationships. Despite these challenges, he managed to overcome his addiction later in life and became an advocate for Alcoholics Anonymous. In addition to his acting career, Hayden was also an accomplished author, writing several books, including his autobiography, Wanderer. 
Sterling Hayden passed away on May 23, 1986, at the age of 70, from prostate cancer. His legacy remains through his memorable performances and his contributions to classic cinema. Hayden's work continues to be celebrated for its depth and intensity, reflecting his unique talent and resilience in the face of personal struggles. Spencer Tracy Spencer Tracy, born on April 5, 1900, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was an esteemed American actor whose career spanned over four decades, earning him a reputation as one of Hollywood's greatest talents. Known for his naturalistic acting style and versatility, Tracy garnered widespread acclaim for his performances in films such as Captain's Courageous, 1937, Boy's Town, 1938, and Adam's Rib, 1949, where he starred alongside Katherine Hepburn. Tracy's ability to portray a wide range of characters with authenticity and emotional depth earned him nine Academy Award nominations and two wins for Best Actor. Despite his professional accolades, Tracy's personal life was complicated by his long-standing battle with alcoholism. This struggle impacted his health and contributed to periods of instability in his career. Nevertheless, he maintained a high level of professionalism and dedication to his craft, consistently delivering powerful performances until the end of his life. Spencer Tracy passed away on June 10, 1967, at the age of 67, from a heart attack. His legacy endures through his remarkable body of work and his influence on generations of actors. Tracy remains a celebrated figure in cinema, known for his compelling performances and his commitment to portraying the complexities of the human experience. Montgomery Clift Montgomery Clift, born on October 17, 1920, in Omaha, Nebraska, was a pioneering American actor renowned for his intense and sensitive portrayals of complex characters. Clift's breakthrough role came in Red River, 1948, opposite John Wayne, but it was his performance in A Place in the Sun, 1951, that catapulted him to stardom and earned him his first Academy Award nomination. His ability to convey deep emotional turmoil and vulnerability set him apart as one of Hollywood's finest actors. Clift's critically acclaimed performances in films such as From Here to Eternity, 1953, and Judgment at Nuremberg, 1961, further cemented his status as a significant talent. However, Clift's life was marred by personal struggles, including his battle with alcoholism, which was exacerbated by a disfiguring car accident in 1956. The accident not only affected his physical appearance, but also deepened his emotional and psychological issues. Despite these challenges, Clift continued to work and deliver powerful performances, although his career and personal life were increasingly overshadowed by his addiction and inner turmoil. Montgomery Clift passed away on July 23, 1966, at the age of 45, from a heart attack. His legacy as a pioneering actor who brought a new level of emotional depth and realism to the screen remains enduring. Clift's work continues to inspire and influence actors and filmmakers, highlighting his significant contributions to the art of cinema. Alan Ladd Alan Ladd, born on September 3, 1913, in Hot Springs, Arkansas, emerged as a notable figure in Hollywood during its golden age. Known for his roles in film noir and westerns, Ladd's breakout performance came in This Gun for Hire, 1942, which established him as a leading man. His stoic and reserved screen presence, coupled with his distinctively soft voice, made him a unique figure in cinema. Ladd continued to solidify his reputation with iconic roles in films such as The Blue Dahlia, 1946, and the classic western Shane, 1953. Despite his professional success, Ladd faced significant personal challenges, including struggles with alcoholism. This battle with addiction affected his health and contributed to periods of instability in both his personal and professional life. Nonetheless, Ladd remained dedicated to his craft, consistently delivering compelling performances that captivated audiences. 
Alan Ladd's life came to a tragic end on January 29, 1964, at the age of 50, due to an accidental overdose of alcohol and sedatives. His legacy continues through his memorable performances and his lasting impact on the film industry. Ladd's contributions to cinema, particularly in the genres of film noir and westerns, remain influential and celebrated. William Holden William Holden, born on April 17, 1918, in O'Fallon, Illinois, was a charismatic American actor who became one of Hollywood's most prominent leading men. His career took off with his portrayal of Joe Gillis in the film noir classic Sunset Boulevard, 1950, which earned him critical acclaim. Holden's versatility and rugged charm allowed him to excel in a variety of genres, including war films, comedies, and dramas. Notable films in his extensive career include Stalag 17, 1953, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Actor, The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, and Network, 1976. Holden's personal life, however, was complicated by his struggle with alcoholism, which impacted his health and relationships. Despite these challenges, he maintained a strong presence in Hollywood, continuing to deliver powerful and memorable performances. His dedication to his craft and his ability to bring authenticity to his roles earned him lasting respect and admiration. William Holden passed away on November 12, 1981, at the age of 63, from injuries sustained after a fall while intoxicated. His legacy endures through his impressive body of work and his significant contributions to the film industry. Holden remains a revered figure in cinema, remembered for his talent, versatility, and enduring screen presence. Lon Chaney Jr. Lon Chaney Jr., born Creighton Tull. Chaney, on February 10, 1906, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, was an American actor best known for his iconic portrayals of classic movie monsters. He gained fame for his role as Lawrence Talbot, also known as the Wolfman, in the Universal Horror films of the 1940s. Chaney's compelling performances in The Wolfman, 1941, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, 1943, and House of Frankenstein, 1944, endeared him to audiences and made him synonymous with the horror genre. Despite his success in Hollywood, Chaney struggled with personal demons, including a lifelong battle with alcoholism. This addiction took a toll on his career and personal relationships, causing periods of instability and health problems. Nevertheless, Chaney continued to work steadily in film and television, contributing significantly to the legacy of classic horror cinema. Lon Chaney Jr. passed away on July 12, 1973, at the age of 67, from heart failure resulting from years of heavy drinking. His legacy as a horror icon remains immortalized in cinema history. Chaney's work continues to be celebrated by horror enthusiasts and film historians, reflecting his enduring impact on the genre. Errol Flynn Errol Flynn, born on June 20, 1909, in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia, was an Australian-American actor who became one of Hollywood's most charismatic and swashbuckling stars. Known for his adventurous roles and devil-may-care attitude, Flynn captivated audiences with his performances in films such as Captain Blood, 1935, The Adventures of Robin Hood, 1938, and The Seahawk, 1940. His athleticism and charming screen presence made him an icon of the action-adventure genre. However, Flynn's personal life was often as tumultuous as his on-screen adventures. He struggled with alcoholism and a playboy lifestyle, which led to numerous scandals and health issues. Despite these challenges, Flynn's charisma and talent kept him in the public eye, and he continued to work in film until his untimely death. Errol Flynn passed away on October 14, 1959, at the age of 50, from a heart attack and liver disease related to his excessive drinking. His legacy endures through his unforgettable performances and his impact on the action-adventure genre. 
Flynn remains a legendary figure in Hollywood, remembered for his swashbuckling roles and his larger-than-life persona. W.C. Fields W.C. Fields, born William Claude Dukenfield on January 29, 1880, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was a renowned American comedian, actor, juggler, and writer. Fields became a major star in the 1930s and 1940s with his distinctive, cynical persona and his comedic talent. Known for his dry wit and unique voice, he starred in a series of successful films, including It's a Gift, 1934, The Bank Dick, 1940, and My Little Chickadee, 1940, which he co-wrote with Mae West. Despite his professional achievements, Fields struggled with a severe addiction to alcohol, which became a central part of his public persona. His drinking habit was often incorporated into his comedic routines and on-screen characters, but in reality, it greatly affected his health and personal life. Fields' heavy drinking led to multiple health issues, including liver and kidney problems. W.C. Fields passed away on December 25, 1946, at the age of 66, from a gastric hemorrhage exacerbated by years of alcohol abuse. His legacy as a pioneering comedian and unique talent endures, with his influence seen in the work of countless comedians and actors who followed. Fields remains a beloved figure in the history of American comedy, celebrated for his wit and originality. Mickey Mantle Mickey Mantle, born on October 20, 1931, in Spavanaugh, Oklahoma, was an iconic American professional baseball player known for his time with the New York Yankees. Mantle's career, which spanned from 1951 to 1968, was marked by his exceptional power hitting, speed, and ability to perform under pressure. He became a legendary figure in baseball, earning numerous accolades, including three American League MVP awards and a place in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mantle was instrumental in leading the Yankees to seven World Series championships, cementing his status as one of the greatest players in the sport's history. However, Mantle's life off the field was fraught with difficulties, primarily stemming from his struggles with alcoholism. His drinking problem began early in his career and persisted throughout his life, impacting his health and personal relationships. Despite these challenges, Mantle remained a beloved figure in the sports world, known for his humility and resilience. Mickey Mantle passed away on August 13, 1995, at the age of 63, due to liver cancer, which was exacerbated by his long-term alcohol abuse. His legacy continues to be celebrated, not only for his extraordinary contributions to baseball, but also for his efforts to raise awareness about the dangers of alcoholism later in life. Mantle's remarkable career and enduring influence make him a revered figure in the annals of American sports history. Richard Burton Richard Burton, born on November 10, 1925, in Pontrydyffyn, Wales, was a highly acclaimed Welsh actor known for his powerful voice and commanding stage presence. He gained international fame for his work in both theater and film, with notable performances in movies such as Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 1966, Beckett, 1964, and Cleopatra, 1963, where he starred alongside Elizabeth Taylor. Burton's intense portrayals and magnetic screen presence earned him numerous accolades and seven Academy Award nominations. Despite his professional achievements, Burton's life was marked by personal turmoil, particularly his struggles with alcoholism. His drinking problems often led to erratic behavior and strained his relationships, including his high-profile and tumultuous marriages to Elizabeth Taylor. Burton's addiction had a significant impact on his health, contributing to a decline in his later years. Richard Burton passed away on August 5, 1984, at the age of 58, from a cerebral hemorrhage. His legacy endures through his remarkable body of work and his influence on acting. Burton is remembered as one of the greatest actors of his generation, with performances that continue to inspire and captivate audiences. Peter O'Toole 
Peter O'Toole, born on August 2, 1932, in Connemara, Ireland, was a legendary actor known for his charismatic performances and distinctive blue eyes. He shot to fame with his portrayal of T.E. Lawrence in Lawrence of Arabia, 1962, a role that earned him international acclaim and his first Academy Award nomination. O'Toole's career spanned over five decades, with standout performances in films such as Beckett, 1964, The Lion in Winter, 1968, and My Favorite Year, 1982. He was nominated for eight Academy Awards, making him one of the most honored actors in history. However, O'Toole's life off-screen was as dramatic as his roles. He struggled with alcoholism for much of his career which led to health issues and impacted his professional life. Despite these challenges, O'Toole managed to continue working and delivered some of his most memorable performances later in his career, showcasing his resilience and dedication to his craft. Peter O'Toole passed away on December 14, 2013, at the age of 81 from complications related to a long illness. His legacy is marked by a vast and varied body of work that highlights his extraordinary talent and enduring impact on the film industry. O'Toole remains an iconic figure in cinema, celebrated for his remarkable ability to bring characters to life with depth and charisma. Dean Martin Dean Martin, born Dino Paul Crocetti on June 7, 1917, in Steubenville, Ohio, was a multi-talented American entertainer known for his work as a singer, actor, and comedian. Martin gained fame as one half of the comedy duo Martin and Lewis, alongside Jerry Lewis, before establishing a successful solo career. He became a beloved figure in entertainment, known for his smooth baritone voice and laid-back persona. Martin's hits like That's Amore and Everybody Loves Somebody endeared him to music fans, while his acting roles in films such as Rio Bravo, 1959, and his participation in the Rat Pack made him a Hollywood icon. Despite his charming on-screen demeanor, Martin faced personal challenges, particularly his battle with alcoholism. His drinking became part of his public image, often portrayed humorously, but it had serious implications for his health and personal life. Martin's career continued to flourish despite these struggles, and he remained a popular figure in the entertainment industry for decades. Dean Martin passed away on December 25, 1995, at the age of 78, due to respiratory failure. His legacy endures through his timeless music, memorable film roles, and contributions to American entertainment. Martin is remembered as the King of Cool, a testament to his lasting influence and charismatic presence. Ray Milland Ray Milland Born Alfred Reginald Jones on January 3, 1907, in Neath, Wales, was a distinguished Welsh-American actor and director. He achieved fame with his versatile acting skills, starring in a wide range of genres including drama, comedy, and thriller. Millen's most acclaimed performance came in The Lost Weekend, 1945, where he portrayed an alcoholic writer struggling with his addiction a role that earned him an Academy Award for Best Actor. His career spanned several decades, with notable films such as Dial M for Murder, 1954, and The Big Clock, 1948. Although Millen's role in The Lost Weekend brought attention to the issue of alcoholism, he himself battled with alcohol-related problems. His personal struggles, however, were often kept private, and he continued to maintain a strong professional front. Millen's dedication to his craft saw him transition successfully into directing, where he also made significant contributions. Ray Milland passed away on March 10, 1986, at the age of 79 from lung cancer. His legacy is marked by his remarkable performances and his contributions to both acting and directing. Milland remains a respected figure in the film industry, remembered for his talent and his impactful portrayal of complex characters. Thank you all for being among those who stayed till the end of the video. Comment too so we can see you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Famous People channel for more insightful content.
We appreciate your participation and look forward to sharing more engaging stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.